as you saw me scraping the ice off my car on the way here this morning. Another different day and another day out of the boat, out on the boat. Um, you can tell that we've reached that time of the year because I've broken out the woolly trapper hat. Uh, I'm here with Simon today and we're just going to go out and see if we can't, well, see if we can't get an elusive unicorn, I think will be the plan, but um, I suspect we might catch a few whitey. Anyway, let's get the show on the road. Um, we need to get some life jackets on and then we'll get out to sea. New Haven Radio, New Haven Radio, CJ2, over. Uh, yeah, am I clear to leave the uh, marina, over? Thank you. Woo! The steam rising off the water. <laughs> Looked out this morning and it did look quite foggy. So, so there is a little bit of fog coming down the river. I mean, it's because the seawater is so much warmer than the air. Yeah. Hey, we're not doing anything too adventurous today, so um, we just get out. That's just nice to get out in this, again, quite small window in the weather. Um, tomorrow, was looking actually earlier in the week, the forecast for tomorrow was actually really good. In fact, tomorrow, Sunday, was the better day. But then it's just turned around. It's turned around completely. Saturday is the better day. Sunday is blowing a gale again. Um, and actually, the offshore, uh, the inshore water forecast, the Met Office one, is, has got a strong wind warming for this coast. But it does, that sort of disagrees with everything else. So we're going to uh, give it a go. It's, it's going to be northerly anyway, and we're going to we're going to be tucked in in the lee of the land. So um, if it does pick up a little bit, we've got a fair amount of shelter. Uh, although it is going round to the west, so when we steam back, it might be the same as it was when we were out the other day. We have to take it a bit easy coming back because we're going to be slamming into it a little bit. But anyway, that's what we're, that's the plan. We get out get out there and uh, yeah, see how we get on. Thanks for joining us. I'll see you in a bit. So, so we got the anchor down. Um, there's there's quite a few fish showing up mid water. Um, so, and I'm hearing reports of, of herrings being caught quite a lot. So, what I've got is I've got some packets of sabikis, which are like tiny little mackerel feathers, but they are tiny. They're on about the size. Does it say what size hook they are? I wouldn't have thought they were much bigger than a twelve. Um, so we'll 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 drop those down and. Um, just leave mid water while I'm tacking up. You know, when I see we might catch some fresh fresh herring. Um, bait, but I do like fresh herring to eat. It's very nice to eat. Bit bony, but it's got beautiful flavour. So we'll see. See how we get on with that. But I've just wound in my light rod just to see um, the baits we're doing, and I've got a fish. Pouting! So, the skunk is out of the boat. Don't get a dance for a pouting, no. And of course, being a pouting, it swallowed the hook right down and spun up the line. Oh, totally spun up the line. Look at that. Go back. Seagull food, I feel. Except we haven't got any seagulls following us at the moment. Oh dear, that has spun it up. I think I need to put a fresh line on that. All right, let's get that sorted out. I've got three rods out now, which isn't ideal with um, when the tide's like this, but we're struggling to hold bottom, to be fair. It is it is whistling through at the moment. Hopefully it'll start slackening off soon. I just want to show you one of these, though. This is, this is something, this time of the year, these come into their own, into their own. It's a USB-powered hand warmer and they get toasty hot so they're a great thing to have in your pocket keep your hands warm um, I mean I put them in underneath my coat and you can feel the heat inside your coat so really good so uh, there's plenty of them on, on the air so I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm not promoting a manufacturer just get on it onto um, Amazon and see if you can't get a couple but they are a real lifesaver you know when your hands are cold like my, mine are now get some feeling back in your fingers really good uh, Let's see if we got, oh, hello, no, you got me, you got me, you got me. Right, right I need to sort this out. Yeah, you got this one here. Yeah, I don't know how that 
this happen because we're we're not swinging about. I did think I had a bite on him earlier. Oh, is there a fish on here? Have we got number two? Not putting up much of a fight. If there is a fish there, it might just be the weight. It's a little tiny light rod and I've got a 12 ounce lead on this at the moment, which is way too heavy for this rod really. No, no fish on there. And the baits look as though they're untouched. I might might swap the um, uptire rod over, put the put the subikis onto a light rod and put heavy weight on that fish baits on the, on that, put it down heavy. I haven't really brought any heavy rods out with me apart from my uptire rods, so um, definitely got to be fishing the bottom to catch fish. I think that's holding bottom there. Yeah, that's on the bottom there. Nice. Yeah, I'm touched. That was looking out. Yeah. Well, it's not the uh, white infest I thought it was going to be. Uh, yet. Could all change with the tide. Uptide rod has got activity. Obviously, there's a huge bow in the line, so you wind for quite a wall. Yeah, there's a fish on there. Yeah, that feels like a decent fish. Oh, oh, yes, yeah, it's, it's fighting hard. Suspecting it might be a congreal. Oh, yeah, that's a good fish. Cool, be a big cod. It's <laughs> a whole cuttlefish on here on bait, and I've got big, strong hooks on there, so assuming it's hooked well. It's not going to break a hook out. I don't know what breaking strain line my hooks, I think a 30 pound breaking strain hook snood. So as long as it doesn't rub up against a sharp tooth, should be all right. Could just be a dogfish in the tide, of course. But it was fighting, it was stripping line off me just now. It's coming out a bit more. You see that, uh, that uptide rod there? Could you get that out of the way for us? Sorry? No, no, just that, just out of the way, so I can, I can, I can use the rod properly. I'm thinking a conger eel, but yeah, it's not a dogfish. No. Stripping line off me. But if it's an eel, it's a big one, or it's a decent size one. Mind you, on a long, up, long uptide like that, they, they they feel bigger than they are. Yeah. Ooh, back a bit. yeah. <laughs> well, the, the competition today is for the longest cod and if no cod are caught it's the longest fish <laughs> so you want to see if you can start breaking out of that net it's probably buried behind stuff right so we've 
we've hit the first stage we've hooked it the next stage of i want to see it is we haven't seen it yet but it's it is putting up a hell of a fight Still stripping the line off me. I don't want to tighten the drag up too much because I'm conscious that it's only 30 pounds breaking straight hook snood on here. Play it, won't you? Well, that's what I'm doing. And of course, there's quite a tide running, so the further it goes down tide, it there it is, it's an eel. Yeah, see it on the surface. Yeah. Right, so second phase, I've seen it. <laughs> whole fleet of... It looks a reasonable size, certainly a double. <laughs> yes, can we land it? Because it's, it's chafing teeth, we'll be chafing on that little light hook snood. <laughs> Loads of little um, sibs out here. So this is this is on a cod bait. So I wasn't fishing for it. Sorry. Well, I, I, I don't think I'm, I don't want to risk pulling it in because it's only light hook snood. But uh, yeah, I have a plethora. I have rakes of disgorges. This is where it might do its death run. Oh, yeah, yeah, see the boat doesn't like it. That is actually quite a nice eel. I would think easy 20, yeah. It's got a big fat belly on it. It's gonna be it's gonna be quite an achievement to land it, I think. Yeah, I mean having said that, it might not be. It's 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 fat, but it's not long. We'll see. Oh well yeah, obviously try and get it behind the tail and get it back into the net. Because it'll otherwise it'll just come back out of the net again. Yeah. Right, I've got shock leaders into the reel. Might be able to. We'll see how it's hooked. See if the, if there's a hook in its lip and it's not got line in its mouth, we'll swing it over the side. But it's cleanly hooked, I think. This is that is actually top, quite a tidy eel. That's probably bigger than any of the ones I had in the, on the Conga comp, actually. Yeah, maybe no, I think it's it's, a, it's quite well hooked. Oh, don't, no, 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 careful, 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 careful. I'll get it back, I'll get it up the boat. And then when it drops back, <clears throat> when it drops back, it can drop back into the net. Oh, they swim backwards as strongly as they swim forward. Yeah, it's just gonna get its head in, that's it, way in the net. Yeah, and swing it in, mate. That's it. Lovely, jubbly. How heavy does it does it weigh? Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! Look at that bad boy. It's heavier than you think. Yeah, that's a nice eel, that. Chunky. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm knackered. I'm knackered. <laughs> Yeah, you can see the hook there. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I don't, I don't tend to fish for congas with with panel hooks because of the risk, the dangers involved. Yeah. But both the hooks are quite near its mouth. Um, well, well, let's get it unhooked first. Um, let's see if I can T-bar it first of all. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's actually only taken one of the hooks. The other hook is is not in. Oh well. So it just goes to show the line parted. We've got to measure it. <laughs> have you? I, I think I've got a tape on it. I did have a tape on it. Yeah, I've got a tape, yeah. I've got that though. Try and get that hook out of your mouth, mate. I don't want you to go down with a hook in your mouth if you don't need to. That's it, that's that done. <sighs> right, I'm gonna get it on the phone. And the sun has come out. <laughs> Hoo -hoo! Could this be the longest fish for the for the cod comp today? Bouncing at nearly 21 pound. 19, 20. Uh, 20. Uh, it's a 20. If you can hold it down at its tip of its tail. What's it in centimetres? Turn it over for centimetres. Yeah. 143. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. mm, well, it's fattening up for the winter, I guess. Yeah. Right, let's get him back in the water and uh, carry on fishing. I've measured him, I've weighed him, filmed him. He's disgorged. Uh, and now we're going to. Put him back. <coughs> and away! And he's off and swimming. It was, it was 20, going up to 20.6, 20 20.9 and okay, bouncing 20. around. Okay, we'll so say 20, we'll say 20. Yeah. Right, now you know what that means, don't you? Can we hear some music coming? Yeah, here it is. Way and cut! Ha <laughs> ha! Haven't had a dance for ages. Yeah, happy days. Let's get this baited up and get it back out there. Couldn't go any further than the, the marker boy, to be fair. And then it's, it's, well, yeah, but you're up tide. You're not really casting up tide. You should be casting out. Is the idea? Well, yeah, that's what I was aiming. That. I wasn't aiming at the. Yeah. Boy, I'm saying didn't go much further than that. Yeah. Time's look. It's already going down the side. But I oh, know. I'll see if it's grip. Yeah, the only way you can know, or you'll know, you'll know is your lines that off, off your downside rods are going that way, and the upside rod is slightly out of it, it's not in line with the downside thing, so you know therefore it's in, because it's holding it off onto the side and the tide, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's a bit of a misnomer, people call it uptiding, and they think you've got to cast uptide, I think it's called uptiding to differentiate it from downtiding, because I tend to cast just out there. Yeah, but what I mean is the, the you want the bait that you anchor to the bottom there. The line bows out across there. Well, yeah, but you want you want your bait anchored about there. Yeah, but by the time you cast yeah, there, yeah. Um, well, that's I've not found that, but. <coughs> I mean, if you're fishing in the Thames Estuary when it's really shallow water, yes, because it takes it out of all the boat disturbance, and you're, you know, you might even be fishing the other side of a sandbar or something like that. But I think here, it's it's probably about the same, I would say. The only good thing about it is is that that when it's the tide is whistling like this, you can get away with lighter gear because it will anchor. As long as you get that bow in the line right. No, that's it, you're getting out of the boat noise. So you're out of the, 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 the noise from the boat by being off to the sides yeah. because there's a, there's a you know, obviously the water slamming against the hull and, and people moving around on the boat. Yeah, and, and that's sort of the, yeah. that's, I mean, that's, that's the theory, that's the, what it says in the books. Of course, a lot of people, the people that advocate, I mean, it was Cox and Rule that 
but uh, not the company, but the John. Cox, John Cox, and and whoever ruled who had the boat. Um, well, it's getting quite nice now, isn't it? The weather is actually improving. Let's get this upside down to the water. Someone can feel me casting it. Right, I've got a whole baby cuttlefish on here, so it's a big bait. It is a cod bait, it's what we're fishing for, but obviously it will pick up congrils. I was picking up whiting on it a couple of years ago because they were ragging it. Right, I'm going to cast in the boat, so keep your head out that way. Right, the idea now is, is you let out the line, so the lead is sinking in the, into the current and then the grip leg grips in and you let a big bow of line out all the way back round to it. So the line is coming off that weight at a, at a shallow angle, holding the weight, in the, 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 the grip lead into the bottom is the theory. So you're letting it a long way down, but, and you think you wouldn't see the bites, but you do because it, it, the water holds the line like a teleflex. So any bites will travel up around the line. And you know if it's working, because the line from this rod won't be on the same angle as the downsides. I think that's probably there. Let's have a look. Yeah, it feels like it. It feels like it's um, holding. I wasn't so sure last time, but of course I then had that eel, so clearly it was working. I might, the tide might even be slacking off a little bit, I don't know. Yeah. So it might be it might be starting to fish on the bottom, you might be able to get these weights on the bottom properly. I want to bring this one up because I'm not sure if I saw a bite on this or not when I was playing with that eel. And the uh, sabikis and, um, on that rod, I don't know. Might swap it over and put a bigger weight on that and, and transfer the sabikis onto this little light rod. Fish that other upside as a downside, but with a bigger weight on it, so I'm anchored hard on the bottom. Because should be get, we should be getting plagued by whiting. Nothing on there. Nothing on there. So we'll do a bit of re-rigging. I quite like looking using these little booms because you can swap and change them out. You have a bead on so that it feeds through and basically we'll show you in close detail how to do this. I was hoping that the water clarity might be better than this because I've got my underwater camera with me but I think it's so murky it's not going to do anything, it's not going to pick anything up. So I put the, transferred the sabikis onto this jigging rod, which actually, this is what this rod is actually designed for, is jigging. So, um, so we'll put the jig down and the sabikis. A little bit of jig. A jiggage, and then we'll just let the motion of the ocean take over. And we're going to transfer this, we're going to make this into a downtide, even though it's an uptide, it's an uptide downtide um, fishing setup. Probably want to put a bigger lead than this on it, I think. Casting, eh? Yeah, 
Yeah, no, it is, it, is, it is actually a lot better than it was. <laughs> Hooking finger. You bloody well will be if you do that again. I'm not, not trying to um, I'm joking. sabotage your... <laughs> your tactics. I saw went into the hairdressers yesterday and they've got a new guy in there. Where did you go? Uh, I go to the barber's club in... Um, um, no, it's in Seaford, but it's in on Hindover Road. It's a young lad in there, Vinny. He's really good. And there's got, they've got a new barber in there He's built like a brick shit house, and I thought I recognise him. So I said, "Do I know you?" Anyway, he, he used to box at. Um, at the, at the, uh, the, uh, club? No, the club. No, at uh, Seaford. Oh. In the above the library. So I said, "I thought I recognised." Yeah, he said, "But I was only a nip little kid there. I must have changed a bit." I said, "I don't know. Well, you know, and I think I've probably run into him in other, other places and other ways." Okay, so we've got three rods down again. Uh, swapped a few things around. I've got, I've got. I'm using one of my uptide rods as a downtide with a heavier lead on it. Albeit it's not so necessary now because the tide's slackening off. I've got the jigging rod doing jigging like it should be, and I've got my uptide rod out with with a whole couple on. What, how, what are you fishing on, uh, Si? I'm fishing Hang on. on mackerel and lugworm at the minute. And okay. Squid. Okay, so well, you've got mackerel. Oh, that's a big old bait, isn't it? Mackerel and yeah. lugworm. All oh, right, okay. And while I'm just preparing the next, yeah, the next the hook bait, so I'm. Uh, okay, and you use a knitting needle well, for doing that. Well, that's just to hold it to yeah, yeah, hold together it with ease, and I can yeah. whip the hook on. Yeah, um, yeah it all works, doesn't it? Yeah, I don't probably need yeah. that now, but that's done its job as such. Yeah. All right. Okay. Every day of school, though, something else. So raid the missus' uh, knitting basket and get some of her best knitting needles out. <laughs> Right, I'll put the camera on when something happens, and it will. Simon has very kindly given me a piece of cake. It's a tea cake, but it's a piece of cake nonetheless, and I've got a cup of tea. So let's see if the secret weapon 
the cup of tea and the, the cup of tea and the piece of cake brings the bite on. So let's have a look. So slurp a tea. Now for the cake. I mean, strictly speaking, it should be a sticky cake, so you get it all over your fingers and all over all over your moustache as you get the bite. But with fingers can't be choosers. We'll see. A bit of activity on this rod. Oh, have we ever? I think there's whiting. Yep, here we go. Kind of the target, the sort of the bycatch target, shall we call it, say, is whiting. You won't get a dancer or whiting, however. But if it's a decent, unless it's a decent size eat table whiting, in which case I'm, you know, I might see. You've already had one dance this video. It's got to be something special now. Oh, well, we were having good activity and good tuggage, but. No fish, no fish. They're obviously robbing the bit of mackerel bait at the bottom. Let's put mackerel bait on this bottom hook. Get rid of the worm. Okay, well, we've got a bit of activity on, on this rod here. Um, leave it for a little while. As I say, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely totally surprised that we're not getting bombarded with whiting. Slack, virtually slack water now. I've put the underwater camera down, so we'll see if there's any activity on that. Um, I think my that might be my jig rod there showing up on the sounder. So maybe the, maybe I'm too deep. Maybe it should come up. Oh, yeah, definitely got a bite on that one. You're into something. Simon's into something. I'm into something. You got a conger on there. Yeah? Or oh, it could be a cod. Well, they do nod. That's what they do do. It's a, it's a classic cod bite. It's a big shakes of the head. Well, I'm getting mine up out of the way. I have got, I've got something on here, I think. No, no, I, no, I haven't. No, I'm, I'm robbed. Bait robbed, but no fish. Yeah, good. Well, I, the, all my lines are clear, so you're not on me. Yeah, no so Simon's fighting a fish. Do you want, do you want, are you going to want the net? Not at the minute. I'm just trying to. It's breaking on something now. Well, you 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 haven't got another rod out, have you? Only got the one out. Yeah, it yeah, can't be great on anything I've got down here. Is it? Oh yes, it is as well. You gonna want the net of it or are you gonna pull it out? Pull it out on the leader. Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> well, we didn't go conga fishing. It wasn't the intention, but it's a second eel on the boat. Nice one. On Have you got the cod baits. I've got a, a T bar, you want to T bar it? Can you see the hooks or not? Only one hook. Only one hook. It's, yes, it's. You can see it there. I don't know which side it's hooked into. Yeah, it's a white, there's a white. You've had a white in on there, and, then and it's taken the white in. Well, I don't think it'd be on the way up. It's, it's well, probably had a white in on there for a while. Possibly. There you go. So. If you want to know what's biting the whiting, <laughs> there's your answer. And um, I guess a stinger rig is the answer. <laughs> so that was on a whiting. Put this on this camera here. Woohoo, it's bleeding a bit. Yeah, and away! <laughs> oh, look at that! You're looking to turn my boat into an abattoir. <laughs> Big shoals of fish showing up on the sounder. Oh yeah, that's high up. Yeah, it is. I brought my my jig up quite high because of it. 
we might have to, if the boat starts to swing around, which it probably is going to do soon, we might have to stop up tiding for a bit. Yeah, Because yeah, no, it will just pull was, it out. That was down tight. Yeah. But that was interesting to see that, that how that unraveled, unraveled, wasn't it? So hang on. It obviously took the widening. So when we're fishing stinger rigs, which um, essentially th that almost was, that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to get a whiting on the bottom and, and that eel, if there had been a hook at the top of the bait here, um, that, hook, that the eel well, would have been on that one. big hook. There's only one hook in this. Yeah, that's what, no, but I'm saying, it's, oh, I'm, yes. I'm talking about stinger rigs, we've been doing stinger rigs, so um, yeah, so it does show that the theory, the stinger rig theory definitely works. Um, so yeah, you don't want to keep that, do you? Mm, do you we've got plenty of bait, haven't we? Yeah, sure. So, there you go. Two eels on the boat. And a whiting. <laughs> and a pouting. So we're not setting the world afire, but it's a great day to be out here. Look at this now. It's beautiful. Beautiful day out here, isn't it? Today, aren't we? Don't speak too soon. Because <laughs> the other day I was out here with Steve, and it wasn't much worse than this. Really? And then suddenly it got, it got chopped up really quite, quite, quite quickly. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we weren't far from. We were about 500 yards over there. Hmm. Took me an hour to get back. You know, mist like like wraiths coming up off the water over there. But the sun is shining. It is actually quite pleasant out here. If the sun's shining at home, Marina will have the dishwasher on. Looks like it might be sun, sunny at home, actually. The home is over there. But, but it can be unfishable in seafood, and, and Eastbourne is fishing great, because you have a side of beachy head, you just get... Yeah. I mean, that's one of the advantages of having your boat in Eastbourne, is, is that because the prevailing winds of this country are southwesterly, you can fish twice as many days out of Eastbourne than you can out of New Haven, I, I would imagine. Well, I put the camera on because there was definitely some activity on this rod, which you can't actually see. Um, I'll put this camera on as well so you can see it. But it could just be, we are, we are swinging around with a tide, so it could just be pulling my lead along the bottom. Yeah, it's a bizarre day. I, I, I honestly thought we were going to get absolutely mullered by whiting. Maybe for a little bit further out, I don't know. Maybe the pressure's dropping and they've, they've gone off the feed. Oh, that's definitely going, that rod. It's definitely going. It's a monster huge bait on there, though, so it could just be whiting ragging at the monster huge bait. See if it develops into a big nodding conga bite. I mean, it is a, a cuttlefish head, so there's lots of tentacles and things for whiting to hang on to. Yeah, of course you can. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, the one that I'm hacking up, if you want to, if you can just bits, take it off that one. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I do. I mean, if I was doing that, I would feed it up the line a little bit more so it, the hook's actually very well, and you've got a load of dangly but with no hook in, but um, it, 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 horses for courses, isn't yeah. it, really? Again, with the circle hook, I suppose, well, yeah, I'm going to take it in a lot. Yeah.
going round it might be on the outboard. No, you'd be on the outboard. You got fish? Yeah, it's quite a quite a healthy little knock, isn't it? Yeah. Dogfish. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. It's been a, it's been a really good day. Um, I, I think we were right in coming out today. I did, I did hover for a moment this morning, thinking it would be too foggy. I mean, it is foggy, but it ain't too bad. Um, I'll turn the camera around, you can see, and you'll see what we're seeing. So there we go. So, so you can see that we've probably got, I don't know, 500 meters visibility at the moment, which is enough. There's plenty of blue sky out there, though. There's plenty of blue sky, plenty of current bun. Um, we're not catching thousands and thousands of fish, but to me, I've got a bite on this rod. Definitely got a bite on this rod now. But it's a huge bait on there, so I'm suspecting it's white in the ragging at it. So it's a huge bait on there, but I suspect it's white in the ragging at it. Um, I, I guess I've got to wind it in and see if there's any bait left, to be honest, because they will shred that um, cuttlefish head away to nothing. Uh, yeah, the, the rod that should be catching loads of white in isn't. Very strange day because we've got a bit of fishing. So I'll wind that one in and uh, see what we're getting. There's definitely something on there. I can feel it through the butt of the rod. I just, I just touched it and I felt it tapping. It's their piranhas, the piranhas are stripping the bait. I don't feel anything tugging on here, however. So I think it is, I think it's piranhas stripping the bait. Yeah, there's the bait. That has been quite stripped, quite stripped, quite stripped. So what we're going to put on as bait now? Right, well, I, I've wound up my downside rod because it's been down there a long while. I've not seen any bites. And uh, that's probably why, because I've got two white in on there that have gone to sleep together side by side and have made a bit of a tangle. So I'm going to be unpicking that for a little while, I think. Get the little one off first. So, one, and there's the other one. Oh, it's big white, nice white in though. Yeah, That's a, a table size white in. Simon's just pulled in a table size white in. That's what we want to see a load of them. So, um, I think looking at the sounder, there's a load of fish shown on the bottom as well. So, now we, I need to get these baits sorted out and get them down. So no more talking to you guys, I'm going to be doing that. Cuttlefish. Mm. What I need now is a sandwich to eat with all this all over my hands. bringing up my uh, sabikis. That'll be an interesting tangle if I have. Oh, big white in. Whoa, that is a big boy. That's a nice big white in that. Look at that. So, uh, for Simon's fish pie. 
Yeah. Well, I, I, I will keep it, and if I get a few, I might keep them, but I'm, I'm, it's not worth doing it for one. Oh. Yeah. Have it grilled up, eat it off the bone. Yeah, nice fish. What are you doing with the ones you're keeping? You? Oh, wait, right, okay. But <laughs> that's a mess. That is a mess. No, I'm going to be. I'm going to be. I'm going to be unpicking that for a while. I feel. Sorry. Might not be worth having. No, I, I see Sabikis aren't doing a great deal. I might bring them in. Um, we'll see. Of course, you won't know if, you, if they're in, they're not doing anything, are they? So. No, I suppose it has been slack. I mean, that's the time you'd expect to see it. Well, that's right, and it's it's straight up and down. Yeah. I think that white, you must have... There's isn't there, on the boat to, to yeah. create... Um, Motion of the ocean. Yeah. See, the beauty of these little um, French booms is you can just take them off the line. So that's off the line now. Yeah. So if I unhook... They used to do, use them for, like... Um, no, I've got some long ones. Pollocking and that, didn't they? Wrecking. Yeah. Use them for but but I, I found those in Tony's Tackle. He's got hundreds of them. The small ones. And there's, there's a couple of things I like about it. First of all, there's no loop there. Because you've got a loop there, the line has a habit. Braid gets in behind it and it becomes a real nuisance. And it's not. It's just a little D shape. So yeah. that's really good. And they're short. I quite like the short and they're quite light. So this one might not be so easy. You can move up and down as well, can't you, I guess? Well, you, you, yeah, you can do. You, I mean, you, you might have to undo them a, a couple of turns to get them, so you can bring them up and down. But, uh, hmm. yeah, no, they're good. I do like them. Oh, Simon's got a dogfish. Wouldn't be fishing if it wasn't for a dogfish. That's not a dogfish, is it? No, it is a dogfish. It's a very pale one, isn't it? Blimey. I thought for a moment it was a spur dog or something. Just show it to the camera this one. It's a nice sized dogfish. Yeah, but it's particularly pale. It's, it's a, it, if it's a small one, you can catch and release it. So I'm not saying any minimum size, it's just a picture of a cod. So the biggest cod wins it. And then I've said, in the event that nobody catches any cod, it's the longest fish. So I'm hoping that conger eel is the winner. How many people are in it, you I think there's only one other boat. There's only two other people. <laughs> Wedding! Didn't see those bites at all. Mind you, I was untangling, so for quite a while, but they're not big enough for... They're much smaller, more for bait size, aren't they? Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I mean, this one's even undersized for off the beach. But in the matches, is that a white thing that counted? Yeah. Is it points rather than... Or length is it again? Catch and release is points on length. So uh, you have a card that, that tells you what points they are for weight. Now white, mostly, mostly, I mean I can only go by most of the Tony's one. Tony's ones, there's an 18 centimetre limit on all fish, but he, he get white in a 27 centimetres. Anything under 27 don't count. No, yeah, I think I saw that in the last thing. Um, I've, I filmed an old farts the other day and they had 25, I think, as their minimum size for whiting. Which was actually, it was, it was bizarre because when, when it's 27, everyone catches 26 centimetre whiting. They catch loads and loads and loads of them. On the 25, when they were doing 25, everyone was getting 24s. And you think, it's just, just weird. Oh, hello. That one just had a bang, 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 wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. can put this over there, I've got rid of the sabiki rig. Well, a few more white in. Oh, we've got a bit of action on this rod. 
Yep. Oh yes. Yes, we have some whiting activity, I feel. Might go over to oh, I think they're on there. Or something's on there, I think. I might swap this over to the really light rod. Just get to see a bit more action. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, it's putting a bend in the rod. Maybe, but it might be a decent sized one. Not bringing your rod up line. Woohoo, one waiting. Not particular. Oh, I've got your line though. Definitely got your line. Um, hang on a minute. No, don't, don't let it go slack or anything. I'll get the fish off here first. Because at the moment it's not too bad. Got the little light rod going here. Something banging on here. We're just fishing with a light rod with light weights now, just to uh, for, for the last bit of this tide. Tide's just starting to go. When it gets too much that I can't hold the bottom, I think we're going to call it a day anyway. I don't even know what time it is. It's probably time to go in soon anyway, to be truthful. Sun's quite low on the horizon, isn't it? Sorry? Might have you. Yeah. Yeah, no, we are together. We are united. Woo, there is a one tidy white in there. Oh, I might have enough for me tea tonight then. I might have a couple of white in for me tea. Because that's another decent sized white in. Definitely a uh, table fish, as they say. Just coughed up a whole load of Sprat. So they're eating little fish. Right, well, I just wound me up tide rod in just to check the baits and everything. Now, that was a whole cuttlefish, and that has been noshed. I think a plague of white in have been on that. Um, the tide is running the right way now, so we can actually fish with the uptide the way it should be fished. So let's, uh, let's sort that out. Let's keep that on film if we can. I must be getting quite low on battery on this now. Yeah, it's showing up as being quite low. Hooks are all spun round on themselves, so um, I think that's an indication that Whiten have been at work. Right, I'll stop. I'll stop the film. I'll show it and cast. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to cast out. It's a, a little mackerel flapper. Um, and the way I, I do it is that I hang the hook onto the wires of the breakaway or the grip lead, so it's hanging on there. So as soon as that hits the water, that'll become detached and will be separated from the lead. Uh, and then it's just a case of casting in the boat. So make sure I'm not looped around anything. Right, casting in the boat, so mind your head. And the bait is separated from the lead just before it hit the water, which is nice. And what we let now do is we let it, the lead go all the way to the bottom, and then we keep paying out line, so that the line, a big loop of line, goes down tide from the lead. So it's a shallow angle from the lead, so it's pulling the lead into the, into the bottom so, so it doesn't get dragged down tide. And uh, as I said, it, the line's in, in, in the water and the water acts a bit like a teleflex on it. So that if you get a bite, it actually is quite amazing how little bites you can pick up on this when it's set up right. So there is a bit of tide running now, not a great deal. Um, but that's now down tide. And the way you know that if, if the lead's broken out or, or the tide's got too strong for the lead is when the, li when the line from the rod tip is going straight down tide, you know that the lead has now swung around and it's not working properly. Um, but at the moment it's going off so that my line from, from this rod goes down like that and the line from the, from the uh, uptide rod goes off slightly at an angle. 
Now, all the time that was going on, out the corner of my eye, I could see this rod was banging and crashing. So let's have a little wind and see if we've got any whiting on this. Something on here, I think. Hope I haven't got Simon again. <laughs> You're not coming up, are you? Cool. I mean, I've got two nice sized whiting for my tea tonight. Um, we've had quite a few little ones as well, of course. I don't know what time it is. We can't be staying out here much longer, I wouldn't thought. Three, is it? Oh, blimey, we need to be packing up and give it, let these fish these baits out for 10 minutes and then I think I might pack this one away. Um, yeah, another white in. Not really big enough for a table fish. So we'll put him back. I'll fish these baits out a little bit longer, I think. Yeah, 10 past three, we're gonna pull the pin. Just as the white in are coming on the feed, of course. It's always the way, isn't it? What a beautiful day, though. What a beautiful day now. I mean, the fog is gone, virtually. Well, it's not gone because there's areas of it, but it's gone from where we are. Another big cloud of bait fish going underneath the boat. Let's see if I can get back and turn this camera around so you can see what I'm looking at on the screen. So there's, that's the fish finder screen, and this here is a big cloud of bait fish. Now whether they're herrings or sprats or something else, I mean obviously I've been trying with sabikis all day and not had any joy, so I don't know what they are, but uh, yeah. Okay, so we've got a few more minutes, and then we're going to wind it all in and head back in. I think we've you know, it's been a good day. I've enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed it. Are you enjoyed it today? Yeah. Cold but nice. <laughs> cold, yeah, definitely cold. My finger, I mean, it's, it's just starting to chill off a little bit now. But beautiful, look at that. Let's, before we uh, turn the camera around, look at that, sun on the cliffs. As you can see, little banks of fog around the place. A um, little bit of fog over there. Beautiful, beautiful. These are the sort of winter days that you look forward to. And I suppose, strictly speaking, it's not winter yet, depending on which calendar you use. I always used to go by the 22nd, oh, look at that bite on there. It's rattling and banging. Is it still there, we ask ourselves? Yeah, there's still something there. Right, we wind this one in. I think this, this wall then gets packed away. Don't want to leave it too late because obviously it's dark by oh, yeah. half past four, isn't it? Well, past four o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we've got to get the anchor in, so I don't want to end up with a problem with the anchor as it's getting dark. Well, I didn't, I think we were, I thought we were going to pack it back in about two o'clock, but it just kind of, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Oops. So, one hour, two hour. So I can get a still for the uh, for the thumbnail of the video out of this. Right, again, not big enough for the table, so they'll go back um, and we'll head in. Three. Oh,
I mean, you can have them if you want them, but I'm, I'm not going to bother with them. You don't want them, do you? No, that one's a bit small now. What's the other one? About the same. Braze are sharp little teeth, aren't they? Yeah. Look at the teeth on them. Yeah. See it? Yeah. Keep loads and loads of little tiny striations in your skin. Right, so we're lifting the anchor. Just in time for the fog to come in which is a bit of a pain because I'd like to have a point on the horizon to aim at, but can't have everything. Right, rope's feeding through the uh, ordinary ring nicely. So feel the chain shortly. Let's hope we've got the chain up. Sorry? No, no, never. I, I want to be able to feel it. And I, and I don't want to the risk of a glove getting caught in a loop and whatever. No, no. I don't like gloves. When I was skydiving, I used no, 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 don't, 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 don't. It needs to go in there loose loop, sorry. Well, I didn't, I didn't used to, and then I jumped in a December or January one year, my fucking hands were so cold, I couldn't feel them to do what I, you know, I was thinking, oh, I'm not gonna get a bloody, Pull my parachute the way I'm going at the moment. So I do wear them now. But I never used to because I like to be able to feel things and I like to be able to undo knots and things like that. I don't want to be messing around and take a glove off to do it. Well, I think it picked up the chain all right at that time, which is good. Space. Whew. The sun has suddenly gone down, hasn't it? Which way is home? <laughs> yeah. We've come steaming in, we come steaming in and uh, got near to the harbour, and I can only see about 20 metres now. So it's slow right back down again. I'm literally, I literally am flying on instruments at the moment. In a minute, I think I'm going to get the east arm come looming up in front of me, so um, both of us need to keep our eyes peeled. Yeah, it's completely different here to what it is where we were. New Haven Harbour, New Haven Harbour, CJ2 of her. Yeah, CJ2, obviously I'm feeling my way back in the fog. I can't see your lights. Am I clear to enter when I get near the harbour over? Sorry, can you say again, over? Yes, you're clear, sir. You're clear to enter. Thank you. What is the visibility inside the harbour? Yeah, we see, we're, we're coming in from the east and it's the visibility is down to about 20 metres of it. Yeah, we're not. 
Yeah, we'll see. Right, that was a bit exciting. I think I've discovered some adrenaline in my underwear. The visibility went down to, what, 10 metres, if that. Uh, we've had to creep our way in using the GPS. We can just, just see the east arm over to our right now, and I'm kind of trying to keep myself parallel to it. Um, I'm using the GPS, so I am flying on instruments. So we're all right. I can see the west, the west arm now. The west. We want to be over to the right a little bit more because you drive on the right at sea, believe it or not. Uh, thanks to the French. Right, so we've, we've reached the end of the east arm now. We've got the big gap coming up. Uh, let's turn this around so you can see what I can't see. So that's that's what I can see. Not a lot. Not a lot. So, uh, yeah. Every day a school day. Something different today. Literally, I mean, I've joked about flying on instruments in the past, but I was literally on instruments. So without a GPS, we would never have found our way back. We would never have got our way back. So all them little ribs and sibs that are out there, which probably haven't got it, um, they might be in trouble. Hopefully they've all come back in. Yeah, exciting, exciting times. So every day out at sea is a school day. So I don't know where I am now, I can't see. I'm, 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 back, on, I'm back on instruments. The, the emotional experience is not over yet because we are still flying on instruments. I can't put my other camera onto the screen so you can see what, I, what it is I'm seeing. Because the batteries have gone flat, I think. Yeah, keep your eyes open, Sai, please, mate. I'm not even going to be able to see the way into the marina, the way yeah, things are. Very low visibility, the lowest I've ever seen. Yeah! Just goes to show, don't know how quickly it can come about. Yeah, we're coming up to. Um, well, well, I can see what I can see. I, yeah, I can see what I can see, but. Um, I mean, I can see my lines from going in and out of the harbour, so I'd be able to follow those in. I'm actually following my tracks now. Back into the harbour. Once, yeah. once I get within, I you know, about to see what... Yeah, I can see where we're going now. We've got a bit more visibility, actually. That was crazy, wasn't it? That was actually uh, quite scary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I earned my skipper's, skipper's uh, fees for that, getting back in and that. That's the look of fear, the look of fear in my eyes. Definitely emotional. Right, thanks very much for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have. And that little bit of adrenaline at the end made it all worthwhile. Um, 
yeah, we're going to tie the boat up, clean it up, pack all the stuff away and go home. Keep safe, keep sane, keep fishing. We'll see you on the next one.